All right, so let's look at a couple slightly more challenging substitution integrals, right? Um, start with this one, sine x times cos x, right? Now, one of the tricky things here is that the first thing we said, um, you know, when we're looking for how do we evaluate substitution, what's the first thing you look for? Well, you're supposed to look for composition, right? Because substitution is the reverse of chain rule. Chain rule has to do with composition. And I don't see a composition here. I see a product. So the next thing you ask for is, OK, I also know that you know, when I'm doing substitution, right? I, I'm going to have that u is going to be that g of x. And then there's that du, g prime of x dx, right? So somewhere there's that g of x. Somewhere else there's that g prime. So you say, OK. Is there a function sitting there whose derivative is also in the integral? And yes, right? Derivative of sine is cosine. So if I let sine x be u, then du would be cos x dx, right? And once you realize that, maybe by now you're getting comfortable enough that you, you don't even write the du on the side. You say u is sine x, du is cos x dx, and away we go. This is just the integral of u times du. And u is just u to the 1. This is now a power rule, right? 1 half u squared plus c. Put the u back in. u is equal to what? Sine x. So 1 half sine squared x plus c. And you're done. Simple as that. Um, there's one other thing that's interesting with this one, though. It's not the only way we could have solved it. We could have also done, we could have also done um, u is equal to cos x. du is minus sine x dx. And if we did it that way, we would get the integral of minus cos, or sorry, minus u, we get minus u du, right? Because then cosine becomes the u, and sine x dx becomes minus u. And so we'd get minus 1 half cos squared x plus c. And then you're like, oh no, I get different answers, right? That's, that's not good. I'm not supposed to get different answers. Does that even make sense? Well, two antiderivatives can be different, but they're only supposed to be different by a constant. It looks like these are different by a lot more than a constant, right? Uh, but what do you get if you subtract them? You get half sine squared minus minus half cos squared, half sine squared plus half cos squared, right? Sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So the difference is the difference between the two is, is a constant. It is a constant, right? It's just there happens to be this identity that relates the two, so it makes the answers look very different. Um, in fact, there's one other way you could have tackled this. Uh, you could have used a double angle identity and said, oh, I remember that sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So I could have written this as 1 half integral of sine 2x dx. And then, and then done substitution to deal with the 2, right? Um, u would be equal to 2x, du would be, would be 2dx, so dx is half du. I could have got this as minus 1 quarter um, cos 2x, and that would have also been a valid answer, right? So it's interesting to see that, yeah, there's, there's actually a number of different ways that you can solve this problem, right? You get three very different looking answers, but, you know, if you play around with trig identities, they are, in fact, all the same. Okay? It's kind of fun. Um, let's pause here. We'll come back and we'll tackle the other two.